Hello, everyone. This is uh, a session that will not be very lengthy. The goal is to understand a few things about the program, and the goal is also to understand a few things about you and your journey. Before we begin, like we have mentioned, and we will keep repeating, please have your videos on. It does not matter how much time do you take or how much time do you take out for such sessions. It is extremely critical whenever you're attending these sessions, please have your videos on. That is how the active model of learning will be deployed. You're yourself doing yourself a disservice if you are attending classes or any of these sessions with your videos off. India has an incredible penetration of geo. So cheap data should not be a concern. And it is an investment. I always tend to believe that the most important investment that you can ever make in life is not the investment in terms of capital or money. It's always your investment in terms of time. So if you're taking out this time, make sure that you are extremely diligent for how so many minutes we are going to interrupt. That's the first announcement. So please fix your hair and have the videos on. So Anand, Kaurishri, Siddhika. And everyone. The second thing is, uh, I know I've said this time and again, and I will repeat this for you, that I know you all are very new to the community. You all will be stressed, anxious. You will worry what others might think of you. But then a year later, you might forget the peers that you're giving so much credence to. So my only request is make all the mistakes here with me. It's a beautiful community. No one is here to judge you. Ask me all the dumb questions or dumb, and I'll give you all the dumb answers. But to be brutally honest, there are no dumb questions. So feel free to ask me any questions, any concerns, any doubts that you might have in your mind. It could be as trivial as many of government of India's policies. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. So yeah, this is a beautiful ecosystem where you should make mistakes. You should make mistakes in all the classes. If you're not making mistakes, you're not learning. What you cannot afford is making mistakes in the eventual main examination. We are all preparing for that examination. Okay. That is what should be the end goal. No mistakes in the eventual examination, no mistakes in real life, but here make all the mistakes. That is how you will learn. All of you come from very different backgrounds. All of you have different strengths. Some of you would be wonderful with economics. Some of you would be wonderful with polity. Some of you would struggle with history. But I can assure you, throughout the journey, you will be at par with each other, perhaps better than many of your counterparts, some of you who are having the videos on. So before we begin, anyone, so just to get the sense of the room, how many of you appeared for preliminary examination this year? Can say just two hands? Three hands. Okay. 11 people, 12. That's a good number. So, Rio, what's your story? Hi, sir. Uh, I appeared for prelims this year. Uh, before this, I have appeared three times, but that was in 2017, 18, and 19. I worked three years afterwards. Um, I decided to again try for UPSC. Um, I was almost ready to give up on my preparation, but I came across your videos and I thought I should take one last bet on myself following your strategy. No, my strategy is never to increase your sunk cost. I know year. that. I know that. Okay. And how did this go? 
uh, what 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 are your expectations what are your thoughts basis examination um i thought i was quite well prepared this time for the prelims but uh, i really panicked after seeing the question paper um this i uh, all of the mocks that i had prepared for all the options which had like one only two only i used to leave them all mm-hmm. and then i really panicked when i saw the all, all of the questions were like that and i made the simplest of mistakes and i filled one bubble wrong which i shouldn't have and how many questions did you attempt i have attempted uh, 86 questions okay fair enough uh, anand what's your story uh, hi naman good afternoon uh, this is the first, uh, third attempt which i had given last time i could not clear the prelims only because i could not clear the csat Okay. since the marks were out some time just about a week before the prelims exam uh, for this year i thought probably okay my gs is on par because i scored the exact 88.22 which was the cut off for general so i thought okay probably i can manage it this time and see that also should be enough but then because of the changing i mean there is no pattern as such for upsc but given that you know uh, uh, the one only two only you no know, one is a correct explanation that kind of the questions kind of was tricky and i could not you know uh, uh, clear I, i don't think so i'll be crossing the cut off i attempted about 95 questions mm-hmm. but uh, yeah because of the probably i should have had five more correct answers probably i would have crossed the expected cut off at how much least. how much are you, are you expecting how many marks uh, around uh, 68 or 70 around okay yeah. all right um uh, is there anyone who thinks that uh, after seeing this paper you are a little anxious a little nowhere you have no clue how to prepare is there anyone who thinks like that i'm so glad okay so gayatri himanshi fall in that bucket gayatri your story Hello, sir. Now audible? Yeah. Okay. So, so this was my fourth attempt and my first fourth. serious attempt. Yeah. Okay. This year and in the first three attempts, the issue with me was that I like I stay in Bombay, even in a very small house. So I thought, you know, maybe there are people who come from slums and also they prepare in their own houses and make it to the exam. So I never demanded anything like I want a separate room or something. so i tried to adjust with my family but i think because of that i got a lot of distractions and a lot of disturb- disturbances so but then this year for my fourth attempt i thought i should take a room for rent so i did take this year and i studied really hard and my gs paper was very good like many people who came out of the exam hall were like very anxious but like i calculated my score and it's 100 and more than that so i'm in that bracket of 100 to 105 depending on various coaching keys so i'm very satisfied with my attempt because even though the paper was very different this time but i did not panic and it was all a mental game i believe yeah. uh, yeah, so i'm happy about that but i'm losing out on csat and i think that's a very dangerous setback for a person like me who cannot really you know go <laughs> with such mistakes but i think i had did what the previous year question demanded in csat but the paper i think was very tough and uh, but this so is not a reason so what are you expecting in csat i'm getting around 58 to 62 sir so so i mean you will have to again appear right yeah Despite i will have to again appear okay yeah all right okay now all of you under your hands now to all those who have watched all the lectures that we asked you to watch please have your hands raised i think there are 6 7 or 7 8 lectures that you have to watch before the first class not that all of the brief souls have watched all the lectures anyone just ishan that's it ishan is only the serious is is the only serious aspirant here and gayatri as well sindhu so gayatri uh after you so again. like yeah. which lectures are you talking about like by by lectures i mean that you all have access to few videos i think approximately 38 39 yeah 39 of them yeah 39 so yeah. some of them are from different angles so number increases and in leads to confusion total mm-hmm. number is 39 so okay. how many of you have attended and i mean seen and watched through those 39 lectures 
I've I've seen first two and I've seen the Gupta ones, the PayPal example you gave. And you don't qualify. Uh, I'm, I'll check with Ishan then. Yeah. So Ishan, have you have you watched through all the lectures? Yes, I watched through all the lectures, and I've even gone through the uh, the community meetings that were done with uh-huh. the officer who had visited for a guest lecture. Okay, and basis your, you know, first impressions. what are your thoughts so um my thoughts basically uh because i'm someone who has already studied history in my graduation so it was uh, so you would be the perfect candidate to give us your thoughts yeah so um i've studied i've studied history through my graduation history is my optional so it was more like a revision and like understanding various different aspects of uh, history like uh, you combine all the viewpoints of each and every uh, historian so that was very interesting and i even made some short running notes so um, right now it was a quick revision for me till the medieval age and then the early modern period like post aurangzeb uh, period so that uh, period was a quick revision for me and now i think uh, we'll soon start with 80, post 1885 okay and um, any key skill sets that you have learned any key observation start Uh, you would want to share with the with your peers. I think I've I've been able to solve more of PYQs now. Mm-hmm. Earlier, I wasn't able to solve a lot of PYQs because, uh, coming coming from the background, I focused way too much on facts. But mm-hmm. now that I have fo- I've focused more on understanding the theories and understanding the flow of history. I think uh, I'm able to solve more PYQs, uh, using conjectures and everything. apart from that i think uh, even the insights that you've given uh, connecting it to the real life world like how you've connected uh, say uh, when we, say ne- even napoleon to what we were studying in modern history so mm-hmm. i think that was uh, a new thing that uh, i came up against all right great thank you so much couple of points the first point is that you cannot and take it in writing you cannot get into indian foreign services if your interview score is less than 190 there will be exceptions but you cannot score below 190 in all these lectures if you're attending diligently if you're participating if you're speaking you should be very well equipped for a good interview score to begin with but of course that's the end stage but our goal is to be in the ifs and for that we need to ensure that our rank is under 100 so all the conjectures that you make all the conversations that you have all the interconnections that you make and how you link philosophy with history history with current affairs current affairs with international affairs it's extremely needed that's point number 1 interview preparation does not start after your mains examination it takes easily a year or two to develop that mindset develop uh, and the way you speak it does not you know you can't change in a week or two by giving a few mock interviews so to all those who have who've gotten really good scores look at their pedigree look at their background look at the internships that they have done all of that holistically compiles into a good personality so if you are hesitant to speak if you're an introvert like me I've been an introvert now is the best time it will take a year but let's ensure let's do our best to ensure that next attempt is the final attempt final if you clear it incredible you should get into the ifs if not you should do that then do, do a job or so and you can then appear in a passive format but don't make this your life goal and mission that's point number 1 the point number 2 is basis the paper uh and basis you know various mains examinations that have held and basis the previous years papers not just this year we can safely say this that any serious aspirant will not be missing out on any of the information so what i mean is that you will have to study ancient you will have to study medieval you have to study modern you have to study post modern not just this you have to be regular with current affairs not just this you have to ensure that you're not missing out on any chapter from lakshmikant 
not just that, you have to also ensure that uh, be it science and tech, be it environment, you are reading through things. If you are not, if you're skipping out, if you're missing out on few components in the UPSC syllabus, you will not be in a position to attempt 100 questions or 95 questions. And take it from me, accuracy will fell, it will fall after your examination. You will make, you will all make silly mistakes. The only way to ensure that you are clearing prelims examination is to ensure that you are attempting almost all the questions. And that will happen if you're not missing out on any of the key parts, be it of history, be it of geography, be it of environment, be it of science and time. Okay. It is my responsibility. It is my responsibility to ensure that the entire syllabus is done and it is your responsibility to be diligent in all the classes and watch all the recordings if you're not attending live classes. There can be situations, there can be circumstances when you are not in a position to attend live classes. I know this. So watch for recordings. Watch recordings with double speed. Watch them again and again. You will have access for a long time. All right. Who else uh, have uh, completed 39 lectures? If you have not completed 39 lectures, that's fine. But I just want to speak with those who have done them because they will come in with a lot of thoughts and reflections. Sindhu. Hi, sir. Um, yeah, I have completed all the lectures, but except for the networking uh, night. Session. It's chill it's session. Oh. It should not bother you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like after watching the lecture, lectures, basically I've started relating things to everyday world to be like day-to-day -day activities that we do. And like uh, whatever I see whenever I go out, like if I observe something, I can like kind of relate it to, okay, this okay, this might be the reason why they have kept this name, like, you know, like that. And one main thing that I've developed is connecting every event to the geography. Like if something has happened in that place, why it had happened and why it has happened in that place particularly. Like this is one thing that has immensely helped me with uh, remembering things, to be honest. Like now I can like kind of easily uh, like, like after like I've started uh, seeing world maps and Indian maps, even if whenever I read newspapers or something, if they have mentioned any place, I'll just Google it out, like where that place exactly is located and why like something has happened only there. So like all these things have helped me a lot. And like, it's it's just very easy to remember things, to be honest, like because, because, I've, com because I've studied ancient and medieval history before uh, joining this, uh, community but uh, I used to just mug up on the facts before like I used to not uh, interlink with uh, economics or quality so now it's it's just very easy it's just going smoothly but um, I, like uh, as you said modern history is a bit like where I feel I have to work on a little bit because it's kind of like too much for me to you know take that information it's uh, I, I think it's a bit vast compared to ancient and modern that's it this is not wine, this is green tea. <laughs> so that's one. Secondly, uh, good to know. See, this is the first attempt that you're making at learning things in a very unique fashion. So it will take some time to acclimatize. But now with 39 lectures, as in when you attend the first class on 19th June, you will be better positioned. And uh, you just have to speak to those who appeared in prelims from Misfits community, even though it was started with 24 in mind you will realize that I will stay with you all even before one day of the examination. I know your course will get over before that, but uh, you know, you're stuck with me, at least for this year. Now, one thing that uh, I want to cover is about newspapers. See, many of you will be appearing for the very first time. Unlike the people who have, who have appeared, who have completed the syllabus even passively, for them, I think newspaper reading is fine, but for those who are the newcomers, newspaper reading could be very difficult. You do not know the context of history, you don't know the context of economics. You may be confused with CPI or with WPI, what's the relevance of each of the two. You may not know or realize the value of capital markets or how capital markets could link with 
the world of global affairs in terms of investments so don't worry about that my only request is for 45 minutes every day pick up hindu or indian express whichever newspaper that you are picking there is no need to make notes just for 45 minutes read through things it's okay if you don't understand anything but that should be your daily routine until 19th june you wake up 45 minutes you read through it it's okay if you reading through the sports page just get into the habit of reading then once we begin with classes i will be working on your foundations and once your foundations are clear you will then start making a lot of sense from the newspaper readings but do not worry about making news newspaper notes read of gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 don't worry about that just read through it get into the habit you know if it's physical newspaper or if it's digital newspaper pick any of the format and stick with that format for the entire year or two this is whenever your interview is scheduled i know for most of you it will not make sense but you will realize in time to come that this is very much needed just for 45 minutes not a minute less not a minute more even if you find something very exciting after 45 minutes you have to throw away the newspaper but you have to read through the newspaper for 45 minutes at least until 19th june works and of course we will be covering various foundations that will make things very easy for you going forward once preliminary examination in you know, a schedule or when we have closer to the main cycle we will change gears we will talk about few magazines easily available in the market there is no need to recreate the wheel it exists let's make the best use of those those opportunities we are focusing on standard books for that specific reason all right anyone else who has attended and you know gone through all the lectures vishal off to you uh, hi sir hi everybody uh, sir in full disclosure i haven't watched all the videos but i've done about 37 36 videos i'm at the 1857 revolt so okay. nice. i'm there right now but i mean i feel like i have enough insight to just contribute something to this uh, uh, this meeting uh, sir first of all with respect to answering the the other uh, questions right so you ask many questions in the course of the class so often i always pause the video and i try to think of an answer immediately to give to you you know uh, and occasionally also make comments like when you uh, for example you mentioned about uh, you know britishers being thieves and all that i i used to laugh and i used to make, just make a joke back even though you weren't actually there in person so it it was quite uh, interactive in that sense for myself um and also of course uh, one important thing that i really liked was uh reading the the materials post lecture right i think that really helped a lot and i was able to recollect a lot more things than i um, anticipated and in fact it uh, i kept kept going back to the material again and again to read the things to make sure that as my conjectures were were right along the course of what we were discussing uh and finally um uh, shadakti ma'am's uh, session on the uh, the techniques right the ad tenet te- technique the pessel method and the bcg matrix those are all really useful so Yeah, I think I I learned quite a bit from these sessions, and uh, I'm hoping the next uh, the last two three lectures I learn even more. So yeah. All right, fantastic, Vishal. I think Shatakshi's session will become very relevant uh, before your mains examination. We will discuss a few of her strategies, even for essays, how you can use those strategies. You cannot get a good rank if you're not uh, getting good score in essays, interviews, ethics. these are the easiest of all papers It requires minimal effort but yields maximum outcome for paper 1 paper 2 paper 3 you need to learn um a quite lo- a lot of facts but for ethics essay interview those are the easiest of all papers okay now what we'll do is i'll take up q and a and these questions can be about anything this is the only opportunity that you have from 19 onwards q and a will be largely about whatever we are studying but today those questions can be about anything any concern any thoughts anything that's bothering you please note this is a very small community and in time to come this will be a very close knit community so you can trust all the people here okay with with your anxieties 
it's not very easy to be open about many things. But here, let's be open about things. And I'm of the opinion that uh, the best way to govern is a mix of both democracy and dictatorship. So we will follow that uh, methodology. All right. Anand, what's your question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so two questions. One is, uh, are there any standard book lists that you kind of can recommend uh, for the larger group here? There are some, I mean, in few of your videos, you had mentioned- Hold okay, on, your voice is, was broke for me, for me for a few seconds. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yes. Sir. So uh, my question was, uh, if you can uh, give us some insight on the uh, recommended book list by your end uh, for the batch. But I mean, some of them, you had previously mentioned it along uh, in some of your videos, but also if there is some book list that you can kind of suggest. And the second one is I'm currently working. So uh, the first attempt I had prepared with, uh, without a job, I just quit my job and then tried, but it was quite fatal. So this time I will be preparing along with my uh, work. So what could be some tips or uh, some of your suggestions that we can you know, leverage to have a productive uh, study time? It's two questions. Thank you. Okay. I think these two are really good questions. And I think I've answered some of these questions even in the, in the prior you know, recordings that you must have watched through. So regarding standard books, I know one thing that Everyone will read through the exact same books and those books are considered to be standard books. Everyone will read through those books. You will also read through those books. My only request is that you read through those books after you're done attending these sessions, be it live, be it recordings. Those video lectures are extremely critical and I'll tell you the reason why. See, in books, you will read through things, you will form your own conjectures, but my goal via live classes or via recorded lectures that you're watching through is that you're not just reading the facts, you're analyzing those facts, you're debating those facts, you're questioning those facts. And in every of those decisions in decisions making conjectures, once you've done that exercise via live classes or via recorded lectures, then if you move over to standard books, things will get very easy and much more fruitful. I really do not want you to waste your time. Time is really critical. There's a reason why there are no pre-reads in my classes. There will be pre-reads in a few of the lectures, but up until now, there has been no pre-reads. There will be no pre-reads as we resume our classes. Post-reads are important and for that, we usually suggest you certain books. But yes, watching through lectures is non-negotiable. If you're thinking that you can skip lectures and read through standard books, then there's no need to be part of Misfits. Misfitters will have a unique edge because of these lectures. That's going to be a USP. And these lectures are not very hard. Every day, two lectures or three lectures done for the day. That's one thing. In terms of standard books, I see these books are very standard, you know, for, for geography, we will go with GC Leong or NCRTs. I'm also looking at another book called PMF material. Let me just check and see and decide, but you should not worry about it because we'll first do live lectures and then I will assign you which book to read for history. We have already done this with Tamil Nadu book. If you were to go through Tamil Nadu book, even this year, you should have been able to answer many direct questions, even from this year's question paper. For ethics, again, let me do the due diligence. But yes, after lectures, we will assign you books. I know the list already, but I'm still debating on that list. Should I assign you that list or not? Otherwise, it's readily available. Every topper will recommend that. But I want you to hold on to it. Just focus on lectures read newspapers, re-revise lectures, observe the world and chill. It's a long drawn process. I don't want you to be exhausted when the most critical time comes. Regarding your productive study time, four hours, not a minute less, not a minute more. 
my advice have these four hours in the first half of your day let's assume that your work starts at 10 am wake up at 5 am 5 to 9 study if for some reason you are not able to attend live classes watch recordings wake up at 5 am 5 to 6 or 6:30 or 7 watch the recordings make notes but every day you have to be consistent every day you have to have a good mental well being every day you should feel that you are a part of a community because millions will not have access to this don't make you pay see the only goal in life your parents will say this your friends will say this just just one year give all your heart yes be efficient about it four hours every day you have to study that is non negotiable you can study for six hours but let's make sure that four hours every day has to be in your schedule until we are done with the syllabus once we are closer to the examination cycle we will up the game could be 6 or 10 hour, 10 hours basis your situation but i cautiously do not want you to burn out of this preparation many will be burnt out many good people will feel the burn i don't want you to be in that situation cool consistency is key regularity is key every day you should feel that you're learning new things every day you should feel that you are improving in your life have hobbies go to gym play cricket tennis badminton whatever talk to family don't avoid them many of you are would be staying with your parents so be lucky in that case so value them cherish them um take care of your mental well being what will happen is if you set unrealistic targets of 6 hours or 10 10 hours at this stage your frustration will be, will build up but if you are setting up achievable targets meet 4 hours every day in time to come you would realize that you are accomplishing all, the, all all your goals you are being mentally sane you are being physically fit you are happy and then in no time you will increase that time span once you are closer to your target but for now let's have realistic targets 4 hours every day 45 minutes of hindu newspaper reading on indian express reading it's achievable but if i were to tell you that you have to make notes on daily basis from that newspaper you have to revise those notes that's not achievable so trust me on this set achievable targets ishan what's your question so i have two questions uh one being that uh the standard books that you've asked us to read as post reads so tamil nadu ncert has very less factual inaccuracies but spectrum has a lot of factual inaccuracies so um and like spectrum has been written from a book which was written by a historian bl grover like rajiv ahira has literally copy pasted a lot of things from that book so is it okay if we refer to some other source as a post read or something that we have already read and second question was that uh, like there are already 42 lectures and the watch time on the portal is about 380 hours so my watch time has already been reduced by uh, i think around um, 80 80 hours or something like that or 81 hours or something like that so uh, if you want to revise the lectures again and again i think the watch time limit is way too less to revise the number of lectures that we have okay see specifically with histories in your case since it's your optional it will be absolutely fine if you want to refer to bl grover or bipin chandras you are comfortable with that but make sure that you're doing that after having watched all the recordings after having attended my live classes because what i'm going to discuss uh although you will find all of those things in the book but the way we are doing it going to do it in a little different and i want you to learn that skill set because yes. that is going to be a distinguishing factor be it in mains be it in your optional so on and so forth so because for ancient and medieval the portion for optional is anyways way too much than for gs but for modern portion for optional and gs is quite similar like overall also the syllabus that we cover for modern because in ancient there are a lot more topics to be covered and even in medieval so history does not change Yeah, yeah, I'm always of the opinion that minimize your sources, minimize the facts, 
maximize your ways and methods to analyze those facts. During my MBA, I think we used to have, so I'm sure many of you would have done your MBAs. You would have realized that there are certain core subjects that you study, corporate finance, operations, marketing, and there are many electives. If you're really good with core subjects, electives are very easy. Impact investing would be an elective, which will be, which is curated after corporate finance, private equity, hedge fund, it's electives. If you're struggling with corporate finance, you will not be able to attend and understand what's going on in other electives. So I'm of the opinion that my lectures are the foundations. You cannot avoid them. And I can also assure you, if you're going to the examination hall by revising, re-revising my own lectures alone, there's no power in the world that should stop you from clearing the examination. Of course, in preliminary examination, there's bits and pieces of luck. How you're reacting on that day, but you should have all the armor, all the tools to win the battle and eventually the war. Regarding your point about the watch time, my team has informed me that you all can watch through each of those episodes three times. That is how it is designed. What's, what happens is many of you, not many of you, some of you, and there has been an incident that uh, people have shared their login details with external parties. Now, once those external parties have access to those video lectures, they make random shots out of those lectures, make it go viral on YouTube, and they pick certain segments of it to make us, you know, to put us in bad light. So because of that reason, we have not provided unlimited access. Now, once you've cleared your preliminary examination, allow me to talk to my team and see if we can figure out a solution. So what they will do, they will do a screening check on each of your accounts and we can then enhance the watch time based on the situation that you are in. I can tell you one thing very clearly and categorically, I exist for one reason, one reason alone. I want to succeed. And how will I succeed? I will succeed only and only if all of you are getting into the warrant services. If that is not possible, I fail and I will fail publicly. And my every second goes into thinking, how can I ensure that misfitters are billion times better than all the counterparts are not part of this community? I cannot afford to fail. I'm doing this for the first time and I want to ensure and send a tradition that this is the best community. I know teachers cannot claim success for their students. They should not claim, you know, there will be many rankers who will perhaps be attending the same coaching institutes. It's eventually the hard work of the students. My goal is to put you in the right direction, be 24 hours, be 24 years, be 20,000 years. I cannot teach you everything, but what I can teach you is how to think, how to make conjectures, how to form conjectures, how to be analytical, how to be logical, how to be calm under stress. That is the goal. And that is what I will impart and that you should learn in whatever time limits that you can watch through the recordings. So I will do anything, everything in my power to ensure that you're succeeding because that is my metric for success. I am going to be teaching you all subjects. <laughs> so it's my responsibility. If I succeed well and enough, but I don't want a situation where you, you say that, you know, history was taught well, geography was taught, was not taught well, and that's why I failed. And for that reason alone, I have not hired external speakers, external teachers, because my, it's my entire responsibility. Cool. Ishan. All right. Sir. Thank you. So every action in action, I am to be blamed. I am to be appreciated. Janani, what's your question? Uh, good afternoon. Sir. Good afternoon, everyone. So, um, after seeing my first attempt is in 2024, that's when I'm eligible to uh, write the exam. 
but then after going through the 2023 paper um, everybody have witnessed uh, extreme change in the paper pattern also and the csat has also been very challenging so my only question is that you have always advised us to have a very calm mind um, without any anxiety and all so is there anything that you would like to add up to what kind of mindset that we need to have to approach this kind of paper or we might even witness a sudden change in paper pattern next year also it is very uncertain so would you like to give us some suggestion in a kind of mindset that we can develop to apply or you know go through these kind of papers or the sudden change uh, in the paper pattern have you heard of adi rama so i was in albania he's a prime minister of albania i used to work with the government of albania north macedonia and serbia i think a few months ago and it was around the time i think few months ago probably in the month of october or november that albanian government was hit by a cyber attack by iranians and uh, and i was astounded to see how calm eri rama was back then i watched him very closely in very close proximity and how he maneuvered the entire situation he eventually won a lot of local elections his party won a few local elections so on and so forth the point that i want to highlight is could be eri rama could be ms dhoni could be narendra modi you should start thinking like leaders yourself why because you will be managing chancery buildings you will be building relations with various foreign governments many of you will be managing districts of the size of european countries if you yourself get swayed number one by external opinions number two if you yourself get swayed by seeing a paper and you know fumble by just seeing a change in pattern or tradition you don't deserve to be in civil services you don't deserve to be a leader a leader has to be calm i am actually disappointed you know what happened was that and there will be many of you if we change the timings of misfits classes some of you will say that we cannot attend classes we've planned our day accordingly that's fine i mean we have said this we do do this months in advance but you should not be at unease every time you should be ready to make changes second point i want to highlight here is and it's important that you all realize this so we live in a upsc centric world where there are 3 4 5 influencers who are shaping narratives the videos go viral 1 million half a million and they are setting up narratives four or five people made, made a video that this year's paper was very difficult upsc is uncrackable it's very uncertain some of it is true but don't get swayed by their ideas just because one person has said this that elimination trick is you know we can't use that trick anymore or just because one person has said you know certain things about the examination many will get then influenced and just propagate the same views but if you were to calmly look at the paper this year's paper you would realize that all of it is see all of that was nonsense just look at the paper very easy questions were asked from many of the topics g20 summit was going on a question from g20 was asked presidential elections took place a question of presidential elections were asked questions in mushroom was asked right eh? in all the four options there was some mushroom some mushroom some mushrooms yeah you can definitely eliminate that questions from history around jainism such easy questions questions on chronology from 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 history which of the empires or rulers did not exist in the 8th century so please do not get swayed by idiots who are just shaping narratives you should yourself have a logical calm mind and that is what we are preparing for i know one thing if you can attend all the lectures every day or if you can watch through all the recordings multiple times there is no reason 
that you should not be in a good state for this examination. Of course, no one will give you guarantees that you will crack the exam. No one should give you those guarantees. But I know this that the content is gold, and it is not easily available. So you have a huge advantage. Make the best use of it, and don't get swayed by external factors. Have your own calm mind. Have your own strategy. There is a reason why we do not have WhatsApp groups or Telegram groups. Other coaching institutes will have those groups. Why? Because with WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, a lot of nonsense gets discussed. Various strategies get discussed. If you were to create a WhatsApp group, many of you will create various sub WhatsApp groups. Your goal in the examination is not to become a collector of WhatsApp groups. Your goal is to become a collector of districts, not notes, not WhatsApp groups. If possible, avoid those nonsensical WhatsApp groups or Telegram groups. Don't be part of those communities. Don't be part of free materials. World today, in a world today, we are inundated with a lot of nonsense materials, a lot of nonsense information. For you, this should be a benefit. When your peers are confused with so much of material in the market, you know that I can study like two books, and I can get things rolling. I've always been a lazy guy, and I expect you all to be lazy guys because lazy folks are the smartest because they figure out ways and means to minimize their efforts and maximize their efficiencies. And that is efficiency, right? Output divided by input, classic physics definition. Minimize inputs, maximize the outputs. That's the goal. Be it in terms of time, be it in terms of material. Hope this answers your question, Chennai. Rashika, or is it Rashika? It's Rashika. Rashika. Yeah. 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 So first of all, uh, I want to thank you very much because this was actually my first attempt in twenty twenty three, and I did not watch all the videos, but I just saw a few of them before giving my attempt, a uh, three or four of them, and some of the networking nights. And uh, when I saw the paper, I just saw it, and I was like just laughing, and I was just remembering the words which you said, like. uh like you said once uh, which you have repeated uh, before also like uh, like think like a leader what uh, sj shankar is in such a position and he thinks have to take a decision about the country or so so i was just seeing the paper and i was like okay fine it came for me it comes for everyone the same way so let me just handle it however i can with the whatever knowledge i have gained and that actually helped me like uh, after checking the key or so of course uh, i'm i think i won't qualify in, uh, in the uh, like a borders of 65 70 or something but uh, what i felt was like uh, like it's fine like with whatever knowledge i had i didn't do any silly mistake or get panicked in any such way and the only things which were running in my mind were the words said by you so that thing i wanted to thank you for that for that reason and of course i'm very like uh, i actually After, like after suddenly giving the paper, I was like, okay, should I uh, think of a plan B along with this or not? I had some thoughts of such kind. Like, should I risk my uh, like this uh, early age on this and all? But now uh, I also feel like okay, one more year. If just for a few lectures, it has been so helpful. Then uh, how about the whole journey with you? I I think it's going to be more fruitful. Yeah, that's one thing, and of course, uh, yeah. I just wanted to say you convey the, uh, to you this, and yeah, regarding the course, I don't have any much questions. Thank you, Rashika, for your kind words. I think those who were part of the, so I think I'll do a session with them as well, probably in a few days. Who appeared for preliminary examination from Misfits Ecosystem, and uh, yeah, I mean they have similar things to say. but because we prepared for prelims holistically they were able to take a lot of benefits so what i want to tell you is that closer to your examination cycle you will also change gears and see how you will benefit for prelims and you how you will benefit for mains so thank you so much and as and when we move on in the journey the preparation for upsc should be comprehensive It should not be like you know for three months I'll prepare for means three months I'll prepare for prelims. No, when you are studying subjects for the very first time, it has to be comprehensive. You cannot have these demarcations. So be it polity, be it history, be it geography, 
we will study comprehensively without worrying about whether it's important for prelims or whether it's important for mains. Yes, once we're closer to the preliminary examination, we will highlight and focus on the prelims centric information. Before mains, we will do things accordingly. But once you're studying and once you're beginning for the very first time, don't have those demarcations. It has to be a comprehensive study. That is how you will benefit. That is how you will remember things. Facts are nonsense otherwise. If you cannot, if you cannot connect it to stories. There was a question about Democratic Republic of Congo, right? In this year's UPC prelims. What was the question? Does anyone remember? Gayatri, do you remember the question? Yeah. So, so there were like two questions with respect to Congo that the Congo River Basin. You forget about the basin, the other one. Or the Cobalt, I think. Exactly. I mean, um, so much news debates about electric vehicles. Cobalt becomes very important resource. It's an easy question to address. That will happen when you're reading things comprehensively, analyzing the world comprehensively. Even if you were infatuated with Elon Musk, you should have been able to answer that question. Because Tesla was accused of certain things in Congo. Tesla has built a narrative, not just a narrative, it's a valuation around climate change. But then there are debates and questions about, is he really being genuine? Because now the cobalt in Congo, it's a blood cobalt. So my advice is we will study things very comprehensively. We will mix the world of business with the world of international affairs, well with the world of history. So just you can raise your hand again whenever that's the case. In the meantime, look forward to meeting you again. Gayatri, what's your question? Okay. Uh, so can I speak about my experience in the first few attempts first? Of course. Cool. The... Today okay. is unfiltered conversation. Unfiltered. Okay. So go on. There's a girl who asked that about the fear thing, no? So I'll tell you that in every attempt, like everybody Gratri, hold on. I think your your yeah. hand is on the mic. And because of that, there's a lot of disturbance. Hello? No, the... Or is it just for me? For everyone, right? Okay. Let Are me these... turn off. Yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Is it... Yes. Okay, great. Let's try when you still, there's a lot of noise. 
हेलो सर या सो इन एवरी अटेम्प्ट दैट आई गिव द डिस्कशन वेंट ऑन कि ये सबसे टफेस्ट पेपर था आपका अब तक का सो दिस विल कीप हैपनिंग पीपल विल यू नो कीप सेइंग दैट दिस वाज द टफेस्ट बट ट्रस्ट मी इन एवरी पेपर दैट आई हैव गिवन देयर वर अ सेट क्वेश्चंस दैट वर डूएबल बाय अ जनरल अंडरस्टैंडिंग नॉट इवन द स्टैंडर्ड बुक्स बट द बेसिक ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड एवरीथिंग एंड इवन दिस ईयर्स पेपर जस्ट अ पैटर्न थोड़ा सा चेंज हुआ था बट rest all it came from the books only it just that you have to apply your peripheral knowledge and you don't have to panic in the examination hall that's what i learned in this attempt that it's okay if you you know if you're not able to apply your knowledge but if you're confident and your mind is calm things even elimination was not eliminated actually because uh, the statement said that the statement one is correct and two is the correct explanation but of the two statements even if you knew, knew one statement is wrong then you can directly come to the conclusion this was the type of elimination that I found in the examination hall itself. Okay, okay. Maybe they are not going one, two, three, four, but they are definitely giving you something. Like examiner is still your friend. So this thing I would like to say that being a misfit community, uh, you don't have to fear. And there are many people in this uh, UPSC thing. They will always try to, you know, make you feel feared about this exam because that's how they can earn through this fear. So this is the one thing. And so my question is that, uh, like, I'm done with the fourth attempt. okay and now like i have done with most of my syllabus of optional and gs also but i am doing your course because because of the exposure you have and the knowledge you have and uh, like how should i utilize the ggi initiative to develop a skill set uh, because 2024 i am giving a full throttle last attempt but if i don't make it i want to be prepared for the worst and you know don't want other service like either it's ifs or a foreign policy concentric like you So in the free time of around four hours, how can I utilize GGI certification course, uh, or for any sense skill set basically? Okay, so couple of points. The first one is that misfits is not a course; it's an experience. Courses and experiences live forever. So let's use that terminology. It's the misfit experience. Second thing is about your elimination point. totally spot on there were so many questions where you can definitely use your conjecture making power to come to right conclusion there was a question about constant assembly and and ambedkar the dates do you think constitution committee will be drafted a month ago you know in the month of 26 november and then few months later constitution should be ready no it should it's a long drawn process so there were not just one question there were so many questions that you could have easily solved correctly if you were just calm and patient about things regarding it being the toughest paper in in the entire century all of that is nonsense why because it's a competitive exam the toughness of the paper has nothing to do it's a competition there are certain seats there are certain questions and there will be a certain cut off so it should not bother you in fact tougher the question paper it's better for us because no one is studying the way that we are studying of course we will all go through standard books but the way we are analyzing the world around us no one is doing it and no one will do it so your question about um, plan b in thinking about plan b i think it's logical at this stage two reasons for it the first reason is that you have already completed a major portion of your syllabus so you're not starting a fresh there is a marginal utility in your case so you can easily prepare for civil services with a good attempt even if you're regular 2 3 4 hours on a daily basis now your question about gji getting into gji is not easy it's an application based process okay so if you do not fit the bucket and we are definitely internationalizing gji these days there are many students who are joining in from yale stanford and many parts of the world to be part of gji ecosystem in gji we have collaborations partnerships with great organizations and you definitely learn a lot of skill sets there are examples of impact investing funds that do not hire from imm ahmedabad but they do hire from gji so no, because a good friend of mine runs that fund so 
GGI itself, you know, to be brutally honest, it's not easy to get into it. Uh, if you want to be part of GGI, give your best in terms of writing the application down. But you can definitely consider the and 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 the kind of jobs that GGIs get are also pretty prestigious. Be it in the world of consulting, be it in the in the in the in the world of important investing, be it in, in the world of product management. So keep that into mind. Uh, once you're applying to GGI, if you're rejected, do not feel disheartened. However, Alt IIT that Shatakshi has launched is also an incredible venture. And the reason is there are a lot and plethora of jobs in the world of tech. McKinsey, BCG, Bain have limited seats, but the world of tech is blooming, growing. It's an emerging space. And if you can combine these skill sets of tech with business, you will have a really good shot. So Alt IIT is something that was started recently. I think it can be an incredible plan B for those who are going to be part of civil or thinking of civil services. Here you build on the analogical skill sets, be it in terms of coding, so on and so forth, been taught from the foundations. And also you can link things with the world of business. That is extremely needed. You know, Sam Altman to Reid Hoffman, they all know basics of certain skill sets, but they're also incredible business skill sets. So keep that thing into mind as in when you're deciding on your plan B. Because if you want to even work as a, as a consultant, or if you want to replicate my trajectory beat in the UN, fact of the matter is that I went to Ivy League school. I can deny it, but that's the case. And will not be easy for many of you to replicate. So look for areas where skills are valued a lot. Unfortunately, in the UN, degrees do matter once in a while. For GGI, we're, we're collaborating with EDB. EDB is Asian Development Bank. We had good round of discussions with them. And we are still in the process of forging a partnership with them. But they're a little reticent of taking the risk. Some firms, they went ahead. But especially with international organizations, they're not, they're a little reticent to take risks. They're never the risk takers. Startups are risk takers. Consulting firms, in some cases, are risk takers. But established government entities, international organizations, they don't they really take risks. They have certain feeder schools that they want to hire from. Hopefully that changes, but for now, that's not the case. So do consider Alt IT as an option. Despite you coming in from commerce background or whatever background, we all know undergrad degrees in India are useless. You really learn anything. So give a year, learn those ancillary skill sets and figure out jobs in those skill sets. So hope this helps in terms of how to utilize a GJ experience because getting a GJ is a little difficult. Gayatri, you have a follow-up? Go on. Uh, so like I have few hours in which I can study something else. So should I like study for the master's in international relations degree at Harvard? Uh, for that, should I study something so that, you know, I have a backup if I call, I don't think it. Okay. So one thing to be noted is, uh, so Harvard does not have master's in international affairs, number one. Second thing is uh, they do have MPP and MPA ID program and programs, but with MPP, you do not get a um, STEM recognition. And as an Indian, if you were to go to Harvard and do an MPP as an Indian or Pakistani or someone from these geographies where our passport does not have a lot of value, it's a little difficult to get the jobs. Even if you were to go to Harvard, Kennedy School, and if you were to put in, let's say, you will easily put in upward of 1.5 crore rupees or 2 crore rupees for that degree if you're going in without scholarships. What if you don't get a job after that? And there are real evidences, incidents where that has been the case. And especially in your case, because you have zero work experience or if you were out of the work ecosystem, getting a job will not be easy. If you go into HKS with a good experience, then easily you can negotiate a good, good job offer in the US markets, even though uh, the economy is in shambles, at least the economic jobs and areas in shambles. Uh, but without work experience, I will not advise HKS MPP program. If you can somehow get into HPS, different story because you get three years because of its STEM recognition. And also HPS is a better brand. People go to HKS as a, 
as an easy means so that's my brutally honest opinion based on my experiences of having friends across these universities and in fact i'm part of one of the advisory board of one of the schools in boston area follow up uh so i had actually read about the extension school the masters in international relations extension degree. harvard extension school in this nonsense it's not even a so go to harvard kennedy that's a recognized decent school in extension school you're wasting your money okay right extension Fine, is good for those who who so in the us there are community colleges extension school is good for them who do not want to community colleges and just get harvard extension school thing recognition but hpair extension schools is our money making ways for harvard harvard is known for its undergraduate program it's known for its hps program the business program and uh, now i think H- mpair is also a good program because when i was in the un we did hire a lot of people from the mpair program these three programs and for the law school is good not the one year degree the five year jd thing that harvard has even after one year law school at hls there are chances that you will not get a job in current job scenario as an indian in the us okay one more question so i think uh, your honesty has helped me to figure out that i just have to go into the ifs only and nothing else no no that's not the case my advice would be uh, give your best attempt learn skill sets ancillary skill sets could be via alt id or by gji you if you get into the civil services well and great but after dj experience or alt it experience you are ready to pivot into a new job role do a job for a year or two and then pursue a masters degree that is when you will learn things and that is that is when you will have higher chances of getting your dream role in that geography while sitting in india we think it's very easy when you once were at harvard or stanford or wharton life will be very easy that's not the case there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of fight to get decent jobs a good friend of mine shivika recently graduated from hps harvard business school but before she went to hps she had a good experience in the world of consulting she worked with bain before that before that she worked at tony bear institute in saudi arabia and dubai before that she also did a masters degree from yale already now if you were to go to hps with your current pedigree will you be able to f- to compete with shivika no to be honest why would employer hire you they're not there to give you f- do, do favors rather you're a cost for them why would they want to sponsor your visa so sitting at home it seems very easy that life will be incredibly easy from graduation from those universities that's not that's not the case there is another school called ncr ncr mba program right so we were in singapore to do some recruitment from ncr ncr term it, itself as a consulting school a lot of people who graduate from ncr they go into consulting but the fact of the matter is look at the people who are getting into consulting they all come from the same background if people able to pivot into consulting that's a different story so that's the holistic picture that you need to look into lima you're back am i audible i'm so sorry everyone i just got a little emotional <laughs> i'm so sorry yeah so i was saying that um, yeah so i had some ankle surgery i have
stitches on my ankle so i they granted me a leave for a month but from uh, from next month i'll have to go to the office anyway I, they can't help on that either on wheelchair or with a walker i'll have to go three days a week so uh, i'm a li- little bit anxious about okay i'll have to manage i'll have to be calm about it uh, but uh, uh, i just wanted to say that uh, when i was in a pet rest i i went through some mental health issues also so i know the value of uh, mental health and how important it is and what mindset it is required for the examination so uh, since last 6 months uh, i'm not that person i was 6 months back as my mental health as in compared to the what mental health i had 6 months back because i know the value of it and when i saw your video you i guess there was there is no one in this upsc ecosystem who talks about the mental health and how important it is in this examination preparation so uh, that's also a uh, 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 one of the point why i uh, subscribe to the misfits so right now i'm a bit anxious about because the anthropology process and optional classes will go uh, will end by uh, september or august end and i'll i and i'll also attend misfits also so i'm a little bit anxious about how how i'll manage all these things the offices although i'll not have any work to do in the office but i'm not sure whether i'll be i'll be able to attend the classes also from the office and it it will be a 9 hour complete 9 hour uh, office three days a week so that thing how how should i manage my optional my optional revision and my gs and my office and i'll also have to go to the physiotherapy and everything so i'm a little bit anxious about that okay two three points the first one is i don't like the language that uh, they will be able to complete optional by september and then i'll be done with optional it rarely happens we can complete gs preparation in, in one month but completion is not the goal what's the point of completing things when you have not learned things when you have not learned how to analyze debate logically think so completion should not be the goal second point is that and i think i know this is a very controversial point but i am of the opinion that your real preparation for optionals begin after your preliminary examination results the time between your mains and your pre you know when you are successfully qualify and that is and there's nothing wrong with that many will also many will prepare in that phase especially with optionals in upsc such as public administration ball science and even in anthropology even in with history you would realize and you can just talk to people and look at the past years paper you would realize that many of the questions are standard questions that always gets repeated so you have to be very strategic about what you are studying how you are remembering those things so optional preparation is not very difficult i can say this for the artsy subjects i don't know about physics chemistry mathematics how do they pan out but for subjects like all science pub art history geography it's not very difficult if you are really good which yes regarding how will you manage your infosys job in chandigarh with your preparation again from misfits there are no high demands in the beginning so you can easily go to your go to your workspace and in the beginning of the of the day you can complete all the misfits work if you cannot attend live classes then of course recording comes to your rescue and our recordings are not like regular recordings it's a fun people someone said that he also laughs in those recordings while watching through that recording and i know this you know many of the people who are just going through recordings they will also crack the exam it is not absolutely mandatory to be part of live classes recordings will also suffice so you have all the luxury and freedom from the gs standpoint four hours every day you should be really good with gs and you get recording access however once we are closer to the examination cycle i might request you depending upon your preparation that you can take a sabbatical from infosys if your preparation is really spot on you can then resign also from infosys 
you have decent work experience that we can leverage and use to get you a new job but right now your stakes are not that high so join the job work on misfits once you're closer to the examination cycle we can then reassess your situation great kesha how do i pronounce your name it's hi sir hi naman garu it's kesha kesha yeah 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 um mm, i think i'll be asking you a question on something which you would not be happy about to hear and that is um i just want to know uh, by what time we'd be ending the learning sessions uh, just so i'm curious about planning and learning so maybe you could help me in that see what will happen is good question and i'm happy about that you've asked this question so don't worry about it so what will happen is if i give you strict timelines that i will finish history in one month geography in one month or polity in one month i will be dis- doing you a disservice because then i will be in a hurry to finish the sub- subjects and i will be able to do it i know this so um all i can guarantee and i should guarantee is that your syllabus will be done before your examination it is my duty if i can't, if I, i can't do it you won't be selected and then i am putting up myself for failure and disaster so and if you were to go through my history lectures also you would realize that i am connecting post modern with modern sometimes world history with ancient so it's not that i'm not completing or completing that part but i will pick those things closer to the examination cycle certain parts so i don't think i would want to give you strict timelines that this is by when i will be able to finish the syllabus what i can give you is that it should be done before your main, before your eventual examination and you should be all set for it all i'm requesting is 4 hours on a daily basis from you if you can plan those 4 hours i'm happy but if not putting in those 4 hours then it's a concerning situation yes you have follow up uh so would you give us a uh, two or three points on what we should do not only about the post reading session but uh not only making the notes but uh, i think it's a very le- irrelevant question probably but uh, uh regarding the questions or answer writing in mains maybe how how can we actually develop from the beginning itself do you suggest that okay i think i have a good question no no good question so there is a scam going on in the market about answer writing and you should be aware of that just you know the prelims has got over so many answer writing means courses have opened up it's useless just think about the people who are going to check your papers who are those field aspirants for them it's a plan b to check your papers how much of interest do they have in checking your papers so do not waste your money 20000 10000 in answer writing nonsense it goes on what you should focus on at this stage the foundational stage is how to build answers and that will happen only when you are diligent with all the lectures once you've completed your economics and polity and whatever subjects this is to be duly noted that when it comes to writing mains examination answers the 21 days before your first mains examination those 21 days are the most crucial days for you and ideally those are the days when you should sit lock yourself in the room for 6 hours and write answers under under a time specific time span whatever practice you do before that it's useless because you will lose touch so for now work on building answers you don't have the requisite knowledge if you were to go and write answers you will write crap it's fine that you are writing crap you will think that i'm just at least practicing how to write crap but that is a disservice again for you and that is how you are wasting time 
when people do such useless activities that's the only reason why they you know they they put in 15 hours 16 hours and they still say that oh, i could not crack the examination because you were not focusing on efficiencies there comes a time for everything now is not the time to focus on answer writing and kese if you were to go through all my videos you would realize that in every class we're discussing questions that can be part of your actual questions in upsc mains we don't do special sessions why because there should be no special sessions there should be a comprehensive way to prepare and that is what we're doing and that is how i know you will benefit and to reiterate the same thing again i will succeed only if you will succeed so i will do anything everything that i think will make you succeed there are many idiotic mistakes that people make i don't want you to make this and i'm glad those people make because you're competing with them they should keep on making those mistakes they should write answers on a daily basis and get those answers checked from idiots Pratika after you hello sir am i audible <laughs> yes you are uh first of all thank you for investing this phase of phase of your life in a molding and shaping the future the future great personalities just like chanakya and my worry is sir that due to unavailability of hard copy of newspaper it is very difficult for me to go through online to go through like online so is it okay if i go through newspaper analysis on youtube i really don't enjoy reading newspaper i'm so sorry it's very time consuming plus exhaustive activity for me okay so promise me one thing it does not matter who is analyzing those newspapers could be rahul gandhi could be a prime minister starting a youtube channel to analyze newspapers you should not watch those videos you should not watch those videos okay my only request is in fact newspapers have certain problems but for upsc examination we have to read through those newspapers what we can do is or what you can do it that before the examination you can pick up a magazine to quickly do things newspaper analysis on youtube videos please do not do it allow others to do it make them feel good about it have them rave about it but you should not every 45 minutes every day 45 minutes invest in reading newspapers if you do not have access to physical newspapers buy a subscription not very expensive and i think there are ways and means through which you can download free newspapers if you like those things so do not do not rely on the experts for the analysis you should do your own analysis you're aiming to be amongst the top 100 people in the country you should have your own brain to do your own analysis you should not let a random youtuber do analysis for you of the news which is usually a view sindhu after you oh uh, so actually i had uh, two questions regarding like uh, i don't know if i have to tell you publicly but yeah uh, i graduated in uh, last year just like august 2022 uh, i didn't sit for placements uh, i don't have relevant skills uh, to take up job now and uh, like if i can't crack 2024 attempt uh, i don't know if i have to cut, like what should i do next like i don't know like even if i have to take up some job i don't know like i'm capable of taking up that job because Which like you i don't have from? relevance uh, rv college of engineering civil engineering so like civil uh, the problem with civil engineering is it's very hard to get jobs for the freshers like they always you know ask for experience and i don't have any skills regarding tech like coding or something so i'm kind of uh, anxious about it bangalore so what will happen is if i were to tell you plan b 
um you will focus your energies in plan b and because of that you will forget everything about planning you will have arguments in your mind that will tell you that plan b seems better so my request is simple for this year i know you've made a mistake that you wasted a year while sitting at home that's fine for this year focus on your planning give all your heart out to misfits focus on that be diligent about it be planned about it but along with it because we focus on efficiencies along with the plan a keep apply to any of the fellowships not just all diet could be any fellowship that you think is relevant what will happen is if for some reason you are not able to crack civil services you can perhaps use the networks and connections that you might build in those fellowships to get your own job and you will also be learning skill sets so and those fellowships will not take a lot of time at least for ggi and all right classes take place on weekends in fact all trade weekends not just this you also build up, you are also part of community that can assist you with references not just this in many cases there are direct employers conducting sessions so my advice is be part of any of the fellowships not just what i'm tell- telling you about do your own research have a logical answer uh, and focus on planning devote 4 hours and rest of the hours play cricket badminton table tennis whatever along with whatever fellowships that you're doing virtually no need to be going in person don't waste your time and my second question is uh, regarding like after all this like uh, all my cousins are doing something in their life i've started comparing myself with others so it's kind of like disturbing i don't know uh, like it's not like sometimes i feel like i'm not that unskilled also but i don't know i just you know i'm kind of anxious like uh like whenever i go home i hear that us uh, one of my cousin is moving abroad for higher studies and like uh, others are doing something else they're celebrating the parents anniversary with their own money and like i'm still dependent on my parents like i hear when i hear such kind of things i kind of feel uh kind of feel very guilty i don't know because like right after my gra- in fact not right of my, after my graduation but i started my upsc preparation when i was in my last semester while i was doing my uh, project i st- uh, like i i feel like i it's not like i wasted this one year i i I've put my efforts but it's not up to the mark so i don't know I'm, i'm just very confused and like filled with guilt i'm like i'm comparing myself with others even my own sibling so i i just i don't know why do you think this is happening i don't know so like upsc is one thing which i wanted to do wanted to do from my childhood like i was into this that's why i didn't sit for placement i was very sure that i would be doing this but all of a sudden after like after almost a year of preparation now i'm feeling like now i'm feeling that did i take take the right decision like i should have sat for the placements i should have taken the job okay. i am getting those kind of thoughts so have you heard of george clooney i think all of you would have heard of him George Clooney is such a famous actor. You know, he landed his first acting role when George Clooney was 17. He used to play an extra in a mini series. An extra in a mini series at the age of 17. For the next 16 years in his life, he just kept on playing extra. No one knew him. All the supporting roles. People were dancing in the back. providing water to main stars it was at the age of 33 george clooney he landed his big break at the age of 33 and thereafter you know he started a tequila brand a 700 million dollars he dominated box office you know with movies like ocean series so on and so forth befriended barack obama the president 
and time and again one thing he says beautifully well he says that he is incredibly lucky that he was not lucky in the beginning of his career from the age of 17 to 33 he felt like a loser every day he felt that he was a nobody why because instant success is also like a drug there are many instances of people who got success very early in life when 6 years 7 years down the line many of them committed suicide there are real evidences on the face of it you will think that they have everything but that's not the case the failure successes they are very interesting why because no one can fully explain them it has to be experienced it's very important that all of you experience failures as early as possible when you're just getting started when your stakes are very low when you don't have a family to manage you're a part of a family your parents have to manage you your financial losses are minimal at this stage and this is the time when you are also getting a lot of experiences only when you fail early in life you will then cherish whatever successes that you will attain in time and years to come george clooney is not alone there are many such personalities who attain success very late in their life many people so you should not worry and bother about what your cousins are doing life is long very long you know 60 70 years there's so many things that you can do in time to come so for now just feel happy for them it's their moment and they're happy about it you do not know their struggles what kind of struggles are they going through so someone is going to the us celebrating that's fine but what happens once you invest all your money in a us education and fail to get a job it's a real scenario you can't even tell your parents whatever you see on youtube or on instagram these are filtered versions of reality these are not realities you don't even know them i'm saying this even for your cousins you don't even know them you just know all the good parts because people rarely share the bad parts of their life they have no incentive so all of this should not concern you bother you you should work on yourself every day you should have a good health and health is not just physical also mental you should work out you should exercise you should study you should be productive every day in whatever you are doing be it the fellowships or be it the misfits and your time will come everyone's times come so i think i don't and i don't think you should worry about feeling early in life feeling early in life is a blessing believe me problem is when you attain so much success in the early years of your life and when and then you fail in your mid career that's that's sad enough many of the actors many of the cricketers who were rock stars in their 20s are miserable in their 30s so be consistent be slow but whatever you're achieving achieve things for the long term and fail as early as possible because that's how you will cherish your successes in time to come anything that's it thank you shalini what's your question hi uh, am i audible yes you are yeah. hi naman hi miss peters um, this is my first live session and uh, i'm really glad that i made right decision of joining this initiative and uh, while i was going through the lectures i realized that i have started making conjectures which was a very good thing and uh, i started thinking on the topics from all the angles so i almost watch all the videos some 6 7 uh, videos are left but believe me when i say i binge watch series on netflix or any other platform so you know your classes has given me that type of exposure like uh, i used to binge watch i was like uh, i was working and then i used to like 
find time in between and then i'm like i want to watch another session now because it's like that good and uh, i believe that in those classes we don't study we picturize and visualize everything which gives it a different level of understanding and lasting impact for sure and uh, my question is uh, i'm just little curious like how are we going to cover all the subjects and by what time but that question has been asked by kesia so i'm just little anxious about that how we will do it that's my job i will make it work in some cases in time to come you will have to attend extra classes as well but i have cautiously chosen a routine for now that we go slow we might i don't know how many of you are admire gandhi ji but i'm a huge admirer of him the kind the way he led the movements the kind of mindset that he had when he was leading those movements of course people in south africa will have different views and opinions about him but i really admire him for the way he led all those movements be it non cooperation be it with india be it civil disobedience i tend to think same is his story with life there will be few months when you will have to work extra hard there will be few years where you will have to work extra hard those years will not be your, you know for your entire life but just few months few years the upsc preparation at least at misfits should be designed and will be designed accordingly if i were to go all in today or tomorrow what will happen is many of you will lose the confidence many of you will struggle in the entire journey so what we will we will do is few days we are very fast few days you are very slow uh so that you're not exhausted it will be like a gandhian movement because gandhian movement was successful so we should be successful lakshmi hi sir so uh, i need an advice like um in during the preparation is it uh, advisable to try other exams like apscs or some other uh, central government exams like ssc because last year uh, i tried uh, a apsc just uh, by giving an attempt to gain some other uh, some experience uh, during that attempt i cleared prelims and then when i prepared for mains uh, i almost gave my four months of preparation for that uh, uh, for the mains examination uh, i result is not published but still uh, uh, it made me feel like my preparation for the upsc for that uh, four months of period was not uh, done uh, since i have concentrated on the state psc so i don't know uh, whether i could give attempt to some other exams during this one year of preparation or uh i should not do that and instead concentrate to the fullest for this examination okay so i think uh, for this this is how you should think if you think that um, my this decision will help me increase two marks in the upsc examination then take that decision but here if you are thinking that if i prepare for this examination be it ssc be it various pscs and there's a chance that even this can decrease my upsc score by like one mark don't do it you're here to prepare for upsc civil services right that's the goal so you should do anything everything to ensure that that goal is achieved and take it from me state pscs are not a good plan b very frustrating life i was part of the minister's office between ministry and there were many ssc promoted officers they were very frustrated with their life very frustrated the only qualm was what if i had cleared my upsc examination life would have been so different what is the point of living such a life so give your heart out for the main examination that you are focusing on if things work out great if it doesn't work out my advice this is my experiences is pivot to a different role 
we're living in a unique age in human history where you can make money in anything and everything that you do or you enjoy doing so why would you want to settle for something that it in itself is a compromise you never began to prepare for civil services keeping state psc or sc examination in mind it was always a compromise for you and if you settle with that compromise your entire life will be compromised what's the point of living that life where you're not happy and you're compromising it will hit you all the time that is the way i think of course everyone has different mindset but this is basis my experiences so i haven't seen people from those services at least in my ministries himanshi uh, uh, good afternoon sir my name is himanshi sir i had this uh, idea of upsc in school days but i fixated on foreign services since uh, end of college because i like to read books so i stumbled about this book called choices uh, written by shiv shankar menon so that's when when i read the book so it talks about various case cases like uh, mumbai attack or tamil tigers what were our options how was the situation how we go about it so that's when i like uh, developed interest towards uh, foreign services but i was unsure because the upsc is a really long journey it's very tough so uh, after my engineering so i worked as a full stack developer for one and a half year and later than i resigned it and uh, spent two and a half years into upsc journey so uh, i'm like a little bit unsure like whether to uh, fully focus on upsc or should i uh, parallelly prepare for cat or go and reskill or reskill myself as a full stack developer or maybe go for a artificial intelligence or machine learning path so i want your opinion on that i think that's a good question see if you are able to justify every day four hours at least for the next few months whatever you want to do whatever makes you feel happy you should do in the rest of the time but i do tend to think that um, if you have so many plans you will achieve none the problem so if you had replaced cat with gmat or gre i would say you should go ahead with it why because gre score or gmat score is valid for 5 years so once you're done with the examination your score is valid for 5 years now what will happen is because of that validity for some reason your examination the upsc examination does not go well you still have that score which is valid what is the scenario with cat score every year you have to reapply for the examination only then it will be valid so if you want to aim for cat like schools or the mba programs nothing wrong with it but i think you should do it once you have once you have given a good shot at upsc once you have done that then then go with the mind that i am not changing gears that seems like a good option but if you want to apply for gre or gmat with one or two months of preparation you can you can easily do that and it's also advisable because given the way csr paper is designed or way was designed or for claim to be designed it's it's you will improve your those skill sets so if you want to apply for an examination gre gmat seems like a good bet because the scores will be valid for 5 years and who knows how things will change but i like the idea you know if you want to pivot pivot into a different sector not the compromised sectors like such as ssc or pscs so uh, do you have any opinion towards like pivoting towards artificial intelligence or machine learning and now is the time a lot of money is to be made there and many startups are keen to hire the talent anand oh yes sir a uh, few light questions if you're okay with it uh, i can sorry so few lighter questions sir. they're not directly connected with the course as such so i can probably take it at the last ones you have time or i can ask it at for now i'll take questions until 4:30 and then we'll have to close so probably. okay i'll uh, skip over to the others that's okay, okay. Samira your question 
Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I just have a question regarding like uh, how could I like plan my schedule accordingly once our classes start? Because initially when the mail came out that it's between 2.30 to 4.30, I had a schedule in my head uh, and I fixed everything according to that. But now that the move to 5 to 7 in the evening, so I'm just a little uh, worried about the post reads because uh, my day usually starts at 6 a.m. and by 9 o'clock I'm like shut down mode completely. And I think that if I attend like 5 to 7 and then sit for like post reads, then I don't think I can give my best effort. I mean, I won't be efficient enough. So is it okay if I like do the post reads like the next morning? Like I wake, I would, I love to wake up at like 4 a.m. Even though I don't right now. Okay. But, so first yeah. and foremost, we are preparing you, we are training you to lead districts or become head of chancheries or to manage commercial relations for India. So much responsibilities. And if you think you cannot manage just a shift in time from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., there is something fundamentally wrong. So let's get out of that mindset that this is my routine and this is what and how I will live my life. You should be very quick to acclimatize to changed settings. You should be acclimatized to even the changed UPSC pattern. Who knows one month before your eventual preliminary examination, they might change the pattern. So don't focus on micro details, focus on macro credible details. That's point number one. Number two, regarding your post reach, you can do it whenever you want. You can also stack it up and do it on the weekends. But what I will advise you, watch through recordings almost on daily basis. If you think your hours or whatever schedule that you have made is non-negotiable, then don't attend live classes. Watch through recordings. Again, those recordings are of great quality. And this is the reason why we also allow access to recordings so that if someone misses the lectures, they, they can watch through recordings or someone has a very tight schedule, they can attend and go through recordings. And you should be good to go even with those recordings because whatever works best for you. It's fine. For some of you, mornings work best. Evenings you want to protect. For others, it could be vice versa. So it, there is so much flexibility already in this fix. So do not worry. And there is no right answer, no wrong answer. Anna, ready? Good evening, sir. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Sir, one thing, sir, first question is, so we have to top optional and essay and interview now, sir. Anyway, the end game is mains now, sir. And also ethics. So, yeah, sir, ethics also, sir. Sir, I think after the prelims, we will have less time. And the next thing is we are already competing with officers who are in Indian police service, revenue mm -hmm. service. So how would we gain an advantage over them? So what strategies do you suggest for us to employ? See, don't build all these arguments that you're competing with IPS officers or IRS officers. There's an IRS in our community. I think he's, is he attending this session today? If you are, then you raise your hand. No. And, uh, Everyone knows competition is amongst the 30, 40,000 people. And, they, and we do not have 30, 40,000 IPS IRS officers. That's number one. Second point that we have, that I want to highlight here is these kinds of arguments are nonsense. It's okay. Someone got into the civil services because many things worked out for that person on that specific year. But next year is fresh. In fact, many a times prior information, prior readings may also work in your disadvantage. So do not go with this mindset that someone is well prepared because they have been in the IPS and have to compete with them. No. Means examination, so much of flexibility. In fact, I will do the exercise with most of you who will appear for means. We will write down our strengths. Some of you will have a good strength about handwriting. 
Some of you could draw things really, really well. Some of you could perhaps structure things very well. While others will have a lot of knowledge that could be their strengths. So what we will do is our goal would be that we want to maximize on our strengths, minimize on our weaknesses. And everyone should have a unique pedagogy to ensure that they're getting good score. So for someone, so, and that is the problem that happens when you appear for these answer writing test papers, because the kind of feedback that these people will give you, it's very standard feedback. They do not even look at your unique propositions, unique value propositions. As humans, we have this tendency to underplay ourselves, underplay our strengths. We easily forget about our strengths. And we always emphasize and highlight our weaknesses, which is fine, but you should not overdo it. You can never forget your strengths. And I'm sure many of you will have a very many unique strengths. Some of you would be incredible with economics. Some of you would be incredible with handwriting or structuring or speed writing or the way they think, or the way they structure your th their thoughts. So just list down those trends and do not forget about those trends and see how those trends could then be used to perform better than your counterparts. Because means examination gives you a lot of liberty. Largely, UPS is a mindset game and it's good. They should be testing your mindset. Half of you will fail the examination because you're not able to control your anxieties because you're not able to control your thoughts, random stream of thoughts. So just be calm, let's on your strength and you should be assured that these strengths, no one can beat me, but you should know your strengths. If you don't have strengths and build those strengths, write down the strengths that you would want to build, work on those strengths. One year is a long, long time. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello, Jim. sir. I was having two, three questions, but due to positive time, I would uh, want to ask how to analyze and PYQs, be it prelims or be it mains. Don't do it now. I will do it with you before your examination. You will waste some really good sources otherwise. Yes. This, so, this goes with GMAR and GRE as well. There are certain official tests that you should keep for the last. And uh, I will keep on covering some of the PIQs whenever I teach you whatever subject that I'm teaching. But PYQs, my advice, uh, don't analyze them at this stage. What you can do is you can have a broad summary of one of the papers. Let's say 2023, 22, 21. Just three papers, but do not waste all the good golden material that UPS has given us. In the end, it's indeed gold. And I'll tell you about how golden that material is a month or two before your examination. The real preparation starts a few months before the examination. Here we have building foundations, building base. But whatever you do in the last couple of months, extremely crucial. And PYQs will play a very important role. So, sir, till then we don't have to touch the PYQs. Uh, like I said, you can do it for a couple of years just to get a sense of what examination is. You can so do this for optionals or subject wise, which would be better. year wise. I would recommend year wise. Yes. Thank you, sir. And you can do that for optional as well. Look at the trend. Achunt. Hello, sir. Achyut, sorry. Hello, sir. Yeah. So first I'd like to admit that because of these videos, I've really developed my logical thinking and analysis. So I have these two questions. The first one is, uh, I've not been into many videos. I've just, uh, I've just started with Delhi Sultanate. So till these videos, uh, when you ask questions, I try to answer them by pausing the videos. But the problem with me is I'll have a lot more things in mind, but I'll, uh, I'll be unable to speak, uh, speak over them. So how can I overcome it? And second thing is how important it is to uh, remember the facts right now at this point of time. Like I, I do really remember the stories of, uh, can you repeat your first question? What's your first question? Am I audible? Yeah, you are actually, uh, 
so basically i'm not not uh, totally into the video sir like i'm i've just started my delhi sultanate the medieval history so uh, when you ask the questions i do really pause the lectures and try to answer the questions but i'll have lot many things about the data i mean about the story so i'll not be i'm unable to uh, uh, speak about the topics like speak about the uh, answers which i'm which are actually running in my mind so i have to overcome it sir and second thing is uh, how important it is to remember the facts at this point of time like i do really uh, uh, understand the stories of is in every uh, timeline and all but how important it is to remember the facts okay so at this stage do not worry about facts yes at this stage facts are also important but at this stage it's you know don't fret too much about it yes there are some facts that i emphasize again and again in the in the lectures as well that you should remember because this is how stories will connect could be about battle of plassey or buxar or battle of wandivash because many of the things are linked so i highlight that in the main classes so just remember those facts don't go overboard with facts okay sir we have to focus on trends themes story logics because eventually you will forget many of the facts point one second point is about uh, the concerns and the struggles that you are facing with pausing the recording thinking of the answers there is no solution the only solution is that you make mistakes make wrong conjectures practice observe others try to replicate what the best people are doing and why are they able to do it think how i am thinking how am i giving the answers and you have a lot of time yes to make observations so make all the mistakes you're not being penalized for it but do make mistakes do yes. give an attempt do try it out so that's it folks i know few of the questions are have not been answered but we'll definitely meet again and we'll keep on meeting again and again on daily basis so until 19th watch through a few of the recordings many of the things i will cover them at the far end of the journey as well but it's good i mean you have a head start so watch through the recordings and uh, we'll start afresh on 19th so all the best good luck